Hi, welcome to another video. So today I'm discussing uh, SD cards again. This is a little micro one, micro SD. Uh, this is it 2 gig? And I want to explain how to get pictures working of an SD card uh, with a PIC 32MZ microcontroller. You'll be aware Microelectronica released their MZ microcontroller MCU a few months ago. I've been struggling to get pictures on it. So let me put this card back in here. So I've turned these switches on because you're new to Microelectronica. Top three switches for this external card. Those three are on and these two. So that's controlling the pictures via SPI uh, examples on Microelectronica's website. So if I reset this, Now you may think it's really slow, and actually it is. This is the PIC32 uh, microcontroller, PIC32 MX795, running at 80 megs, but the pictures on here are actually 800 by 480, as opposed to the 320 by 240. So massive pictures, that's how long a PIC32 takes to display a massive picture on a small TFT. Obviously if I make those pictures smaller, it's going to race through them, you know, a few pictures every couple of seconds. So that's like the first picture. Just want to give you an idea of the speed of this controller with a big picture. It would obviously be quicker if I hooked this up, but I've hooked this up to my PIC32MZ running at 200 megs. Uh, and in case you've got this MCU, at the top of the board, they tell you the SPI connections. Can't read without my glasses, I don't think. So Mozzie, Master Outer Slave In, RG8. The clock is on RG6. And Mizo, so Master In, Slave Out, RG7. So if you're struggling to get this to work on SPR, I'll show you how. You have to use the peripheral pin select. I thought, oh my god, I've not done that before. But I've got into it, I've got this working, and it's fairly intuitive once you understand. So now you've seen how slow this is. I'll take this out. Take this out. Take this out of there. Put this PIC32MZ. This is the 2048 ECH. 124 so 120 volt pin and there we have the big pictures on a 7 inch TFT so this is only running in 8 bit mode at the moment so with reference to the peripheral pin select which I'm going to show you the top 8 parts of the 16 bit for this TFT some of them are remappable pins and the 16 bit isn't working so I'm assuming some of those 8 pins are actually mapped to other functions as you've got a card here, I started writing the uh, which pins were what. So for the first eight pins, all the regular RE0 to RE7, they're the first eight bits. Uh, most of the top eight bits are in the same place as the old MX795, or the same pin numbers. I think two have changed, but some of these top pins are remappable. So I'm assuming they're mapped to other devices, not the parallel master port. So this is the MX, sorry, so, so this is the PIC32 MZ2048 ECH124, so the 124 pin, running at 200 megs, and that's an eight, running at 8 bits at the moment, with 800 by 480 lovely clear pictures. As I'm sure you can see. Let me zoom you in a bit. And it's running fairly quickly considering it's at 8 bit. Not sure if that light's shining on that display. Is it? So 
So while that's running, if you've got the uh, Microelectronica's PIC32 MZ, or like me, I bought this from Snadpick, and he's actually, he's actually helped me out. Um, this 32MZ also didn't work, and that's because I didn't know how to operate the uh, or, or configure the peripheral pin select. Now by default, if I get my scrap of paper, look at this scrap of paper. So this MCU card by Microelectronica, zoom out a bit, they have written on the board, um, so RG6 is the clock for the SPI, MISO is RG7 which is usually SDA4 and MOSI is RG8. When I tried configuring those I just get a blank screen. So if you look at the data sheet, RG8 is SEL4, so that's the serial clock line for I2C, not SPI. RG7, which is MISO, that's the serial data for I2C, uh, not SPI. And similarly with the, so that's a serial clock for I2C4, I2C3, I2C2, so the RG6, SEK2, Serial Data 2, SEL2, so that's I2C. All the pins are by default are I2C, not SPI. There's no SPI pins written on the data sheet. You have to remap them. So let me show you on the data sheet quickly. Right, so this is the data sheet, obviously, for the MZ. And I'm on page 239. That's the start, it tells you about the all pin select. I thought a bit daunting because I hadn't done it before. But the guy at Snadpick uh, sort of talked me through it. I, I had tried a couple of examples myself and it wasn't working. That's probably because uh, well, I, was, I was making loads of mistakes. But, so first of all, you've got the input. So what pin do you want as an input? As I said, I established Microelectronica have written MISO on the board in the silk screen. So I thought, right. MISO is actually in, uh, written down as RG7, which is serial data 4, so I2C4, but I don't want I2C, I want SPI, so we're looking for RG7 as an input. So there's the peripheral name, these are inputs, and then the outputs or input pins, so we're going to look for RG7 down here. and look for SDI2 down here, so oh, SDI1 there, so you could have one of those pins for SDI1, SDI3, one of these pins, but we want SDI2, there it is, there. See if I can zoom you in a bit. Right, so this is the function, what do they call it, what do microchip, input pin selection, so peripheral name, pin name, special function register, and then pin name R bits. Not sure what the R bits, but the, 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 the R bits are the bits you actually have to configure. So we want an RG7, SDI2, so serial data in, so that's slave out, master in, so serial data in, R, there's four bits to configure, so three, two, one, zero, four bits, and have a look down here for RG7, and there it is, second one from the top. So we want RP, so P is for remappable, so uh, RPG7, if we configure RPG7 to 0001, that should make it an input for SDI2. Now if I show you my program, so initialize the SPIs, I'm on SPI2, zoom you out 
because you've probably gone see that. That's initializing the SPI2 standard microelectronica example, 8-bit, uh, and I've been messing about with the clock, but because of this crappy SD card, I can't go any faster than dividing the clock by 8. The SD card becomes erratic, sometimes doesn't read it, so it's a crappy SD card. But so, initialize your SPI as usual, that's just initializing the MCU, that's making bit 7 an input, but I don't think you have to. Disabling the JTAG. Right, so this is the crux of it here. This is the simple, well simple when you know how, adjusting the peripheral pin select. So, so I've got some notes there. So the PIC32 is the master and the SD card is the slave. So peripheral pin select page 239 on data sheet. So we are changing RG7 from SDA4 to SDO, so sealed data on I2C to sealed data out, sealed data out, master out, slave in, master out, slave in. And then we're changing RG8 from SCL4 to SDI, or as, uh, actually I should have put a note, SDO2 and SDI2. I'll do that now. SDO2 and SDI2. So you can reconfigure these data in and data outlines, but you cannot shift the actual clock pin. So you've got to find one of the uh, five or six clocks on the board and decide which, which one you want. So I initially use these bits, so SDI2R, bit 3210, and you can see I've got 0001, which is what we've just read from the data sheet. They were on a line. That worked fine, but and you can also just do SDIR2R, and there's the bits, so in binary 0001. That configured the serial data in for the SPI. And if we go back to the data sheet, so remember RG7 0001, that's the input. Now we go down, input. Selection continued, and then output mapping that's similar to the input mapping. So we want for the input, so we're looking for the port pin here, the RPG8, so that's the pin we want the output on and this is what we can have on RG8. Any of these, so look, we can have the UART transmit, uh, U4 RTS, uh, serial data out one, two or three, five, SS, oh that's slave select, oscillator three, oscillator six, is it OC? Not sure what that is, C1 transmit, and there's various notes. So RPG8, we want serial data out two, so which is SPI2, so look, 0110. Back to the programming. So you can quickly do it with this bit. Look, RPG8R equals binary at 0110, or RPG 8, R, bit 0, 1, 2 and 3, except they're back to front, that should be 3, 2, 1, 0, but because, the, because these bits are a mirror image, it wouldn't matter if you had these back to front. I did initially have this, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, and so that was going 0, 0, 0, 1, but the bits were reverse, so it didn't work. I just haven't reversed these bits, so do it that way, you can't get it wrong. That's how you remap the SPI, or specifically SPI2, on a PIC32MZ. And then down the bottom, so initialize the external memory, get the data, that's a touch panel. You can see the 16 bit parallel master port is not working because the top 8 pins are remappable. I figure their, their, their functions must be different. So um, that's my next bit 
get the 16 bit working, see how fast this displays then. And then the wild one, simply just clear the screen for big images and fill the screen with yellow when it's finished. So don't be afraid, get a snap pick board and just remap some of the pins for what you want. Uh, get the Emoco Electronica board, uh, the, yeah, the PIC32 MZ Monaco controller. Again, I've taken off the Ethernet chip, didn't want it interfering and pulling a line high or low, uh, and I wouldn't be aware of it. Uh, and that's the only one they're doing at the moment. But, superb. Can't wait to get started with these 16-bit data, because this is already quick. Uh, and it's going to be superb running at 16-bit. So all in all, the microchip peripheral pin remapping combined with Microelectronica software, really easy. Microchip actually have um, Microchip Harmony, and you can click a couple of buttons and it does it all for you. But uh, using Microelectronica software, it's still easy once you know how. Thank you for watching. I hope this has helped.